I recently bought this Halo Special Edition console off of eBay for £27. The listing says that this console overheats and gets very loud when playing games, so today I'm going to clean it, mod it and sort out the cooling issues too. First let's get started with disassembly. We need to remove the two cooling vents to be able to remove the side panels. Once that's done, we pop off the panel by bending inwards on it slightly. Then it's screws. Lots of screws. With all the screws removed, the front panel now pops off with the removal of a ribbon cable connecting to the RF board. Then there's more screws. Then the top panel pops off, giving us access to the internals. Because this is a special edition console, we need to remove the extra speaker module and take it out of the chassis for cleaning. I'll be removing the fan for cleaning also. Next comes the heatsink, which is locked down with a metal X clamp. We need to do this to clean and access the RGH3 solder points later. This reveals more dust and some old crusty thermal place that will need to be replaced. I'll clean it up with some Q-tips and some 99% isopropyl alcohol. I'll do the same with the heatsink whilst I'm here. Now I'll deal with those dusty plastic pieces and fans. A warm bath should do the trick nicely. Now I'll dry the plastic pieces and leave them for a few hours to make sure that no water gets on the motherboard. Next we can clean the disk drive, I imagine it's probably full of dust looking at the motherboard. I'll clean the laser up with some IPA and also clean up the metal casing with a small paintbrush. I broke the front DVD bezel in the process of reassembling, so if anyone knows where I can get a new one, let me know in the comments, but for now I'll be replacing it with a black one. With everything cleaned, I'll now perform the RGH3. First I'll solder the NAND wires so we can get that clean NAND backup off of the console. Pre-tuning the points is simply just adding solder onto the points so we have something to connect the wires to.
Then I'll add all the wires, making sure the right colours go to the right points. With the wire soldered, I'll connect them to the flasher and plug in standby power to the console. Now to open up JRunner and select the read NAND option to get our backups made. Then I'll write the ECC file, making sure to check Glitch2 and RGH3 options. Now we need to install the RGH3 wiring to boot into the Zell image we just wrote. One of these points is called PLL, but it's covered by silk screen, so we'll need to use a small knife to expose the point. Next we need to prepare the PLL QSB with a resistor on the R1 pad. Speaking of PCBs, did you know you can get your own printed with today's sponsor PCBWay? That's right, with their quick order services all you have to do is upload the Gerbers for any PCB board and they'll get them shipped to you quickly and affordably. I've used them for all of my hardware projects so far and the quality is fantastic, as is their service. They also offer board assembly, 3D printing and CNC, making them a one-stop shop for all of your prototyping and manufacturing needs. Go check them out at PCBWay.com Trinity consoles require a 3K ohm SMD resistor with a size of 0603 or 0805. Next we need to solder the PCB down to the motherboard using the three included pads. The first point is simply just to secure the board in place, so my method here is melting the solder, aligning the PCB so that all the points are visible, and then removing heat to solidify it in place again. The next point is post, which is required for the IGH3 to work. And the last point is PLL, which is the one we scratched the silk screen away for. Once those points are done, it's time to clean up the flux with some 99% isopropyl alcohol, as flux is corrosive over time and could damage the motherboard.
Now that we've got access to the bigger pads using the QSB, we need to solder from them onto two points onto the motherboard. The first point can be found by looking for the R3, R22 resistors as it's just underneath those. This is our post point. Now I'll connect a wire to the point and connect the other end to the post point on the QSB. If you're following along, make sure to trim your wires so that they're not too long, as doing so could cause long boot times later on. Next I'll connect a wire to the PLL point on the QSB and head down to the bottom of the motherboard to find FT2V1 and connect those two together. With that done, we're now ready to clean up all of the flux with some more IPA and secure the wires down. I like to use electrical tape, but some people use hot glue or other tapes. It's more of a personal preference. Now we can see if all of this work was for nothing or not. Let's plug in power, HDMI and the ring of light board and turn the console on. If you've done everything correctly, then you'll boot into Zell and get your CPU key, which we need to unlock the original NAND backups and edit them. This key needs to be put into the CPU key box in JRunner. Once the NAND is unlocked with the correct CPU key, I'll select the Create XE Build option, connect up my programmers and standby power to the console, and then select Write NAND. The XE build image is our modified dashboard full of patches and hacks that we need to run all the homebrew and games we want. Once that's been written, we boot the console, and if we see the Xbox 360 dashboard, then it's successful and we now know that we have a modded console. Now it's time for reassembly, and in hopes of this video not being half an hour long, I'm going to skip over this part. There are plenty of other good videos showing you how to do this. I also had a blue ring of light board from one of my other videos lying around, so I installed that to add some extra cosmetics. That video will also be linked in the description below if you're interested. And with the console reassembled and booting, that's going to be it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then leave a like and subscribe, and a big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. That'll be linked below also. And with the video done, I'll see you next time.